Okay. Just so that we can understand the book of Romans, I want to skip down. I've um, done a lot of... Um, I've made a... Uh, basically a, a highlight of the book of Romans from chapter 1 to chapter 3 to show you something about the contrast between James and, um, and Paul. Um, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For, the, for in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed. This is very important here. The righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Paul, this little statement here in 116, Romans 116, you can always find one little statement that Paul makes that he will now make the case for. So to bring, so if you want context of what Paul is going to talk about next, is he's going to expound upon the reason why he's talking about a righteousness that's not from the law. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, just as it is written the righteous will live by faith. And this is Paul's argument against James, basically. And so he goes on to say the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, including those who won't accept Jesus. Since, that they may, so since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. And it skips down. This is verse 18 and then it skips down. So that people are without excuse. That's all people, Jew and Greek. So if you think that Paul's book is just to the Jews, Paul, I mean, uh, James's book is just to the Jews, and that the Jews, are, the Jewish believers have to be under this, but the, the Christian believers aren't. It, it, Paul blows this whole argument away as you skip down. And I, I'm, I'm asking you to actually read through this a few times to see how Paul takes the argument of James being written just to the dispersed Jews, and he blows it apart by saying, all come by faith, where James is saying, not by faith only. So, the people are without excuse. You therefore have no excuse, you, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemned yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. And this is talking about the righteous Jews, or the self-righteous Jews that are, that are judging others when inside they have dead man's bones. Now it talks about all who sin apart from the law also perish apart from the law. Now Paul makes the argument that from, from the time of Adam to the time of Moses when they were given the law, people were being judged and, and, and death reigned for all that time without them having the law. So what law judged them? It was the law of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil is the law. So they had a law. When Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, they were, they were kicked out of the garden because they ate of the law. And it was written on their conscience, but at the same time they rebelled against it because they're of the flesh. So, this is basically condemning Jew and Gentile alike. So, all who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. But you see, no one will be declared righteous because right after that it says, No one is righteous. No, not one person in the world is righteous. Righteousness and has enough righteousness to, to follow this. And this is Paul's argument. So, this is why he says, For it is not those who hear, hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Now remember that the Jews had the sacrifices and the ones that saw Christ through the, through the blood knew that their own righteousness couldn't get them to heaven. They, they, they trusted in the sacrifices. So, now if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God that way, as James did, if you know His will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in the dark, Paul is being sarcastic here. 
You then who teach others, you do not, you, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? Basically what he's saying is, is that, yeah, if you're so righteous, you break the law at one point, you're judged by the law. Just as James said, but in this context, he's saying that nobody is righteous because nobody can follow that law because we all break the law at one point. It says circumcision is a, is, has no value if the, you observe, if circumcision has value. This is verse 25. If you observe the law. But if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So he's making the case that any Jew that thinks that, that, that they're getting to get to heaven by, by their circumcision and following the law is, is basically blind. What shall we conclude then? So now this is uh, 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 Romans 2. What shall we conclude? See, it started off by Paul saying a righteousness by faith. And now we're going to get the conclusion of the matter. So um, we get to the part where it says, so what, should, what do we conclude? Um, circumcision has no value. What do we conclude then? Verse 9, chapter 2. Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have all become, altogether become worthless. Now here is the other side, the bookend right here. But now, apart from the law, this is verse 21, 2. Now, apart from the law. The righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith. Remember the first, remember, see how it's a bookend? He said, a righteousness through faith. Jesus Christ, through the faith in Jesus Christ, to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. So whatever James might have been writing to these Jews, Paul is saying that no, it's by faith and faith alone. For all have sinned and short, fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace. Now it talks about how you're justified freely by His grace, not by your works, through the redemption that came by Christ. And then it talks about a righteousness apart from the law as it goes on. In Romans, now you can see how it builds to uh, Abraham being justified by faith. This, if you tell me it's a clear apparent contradiction, then basically you're saying, no, there's got to be a way that it's an apparent contradiction. You look at James and you look at what he said compared to what Paul is talking about. And James's book cannot fly because it flies in the face of grace. Thank you.